In this video, we will solve exercises using two capital budgeting decision models, namely the payback period and the discounted payback period. And at the end of the video, we will look at the advantages and disadvantages of these two models. But before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is concerned with long-term decision-making and can be defined as the planning, appraising, comparing, and selecting of a firm's long-term projects. Long-term projects are those with lives that extend over a year or longer than the normal business operating cycle. In other words, capital budgeting decision models are models that help you make sound financial decisions about whether a project is worthwhile or not worthwhile. So let's get started with the first capital budgeting decision model, namely the payback period. This is the simplest capital budgeting decision model. It calculates at what point in time the initial investment, cash outflow, or we also call it outlay, is recovered by the corresponding future cash inflow. It answers the following question, how soon will I recover my initial investment? So let's look at this example and use the payback period to decide whether the project is worthwhile or not. The example says, suppose you want to buy a new copier for your office, which will cost you $5,000. As a financial manager, you estimated that the new copier will be functional for five years and will generate $1,500 in the first year, $2,500 in the second year, $3,500 in the third year, $4,500 in the fourth year, and $5,500 in the fifth year. How soon will you recover the cost of the copier? And to answer the question, we will use the payback period. To make it simple for you, I'm using a table, but you don't really have to use a table. But let's do it this time with a table. First, you have the year, the cash flow, yet to be recovered, and percentage of the year recovered. I'll go step by step in them. First, it says in the question that the new copier will be functional for five years, and you have already estimated the cash inflow for five years. So let's put the years um, in the column, down in the column. We have year zero, which is today, year one, two, three, four, and five. And then we also have the cash flow. Between brackets, the 5,000, this is the cost. It's a negative number. So I'll put it in year zero because this is what I paid today. And then let's put the cash inflow for the first year, 1,500, for the second year, 2,500, for the third year, fourth year, and fifth year as follows. To get started, I will use the cash outflow or the initial outlay. It is in minus, minus 5,000, and I will add to it the cash inflow for the first year which is the 1,500, my answer will be minus 3,500. The number is in minus, which means I'm still to recover the, my initial outlay. So I will move to the next step. Starting with the minus 3,500, and then adding the cash inflow, which is the 2,500 for the second year, my answer will be minus 1,000. It means I'm still short minus 1,000. So I will continue. Minus 1,000 plus the cash inflow for the third year, which is 3,500. Now, obviously, the 3,500 will cover our remaining uh, outlay, which is the 1,000. However, we don't need the whole amount. Actually, the answer will be 2,500. But let's put it as zero. And the amount is recovered. So I will not use the remaining cash inflows for the fourth year and fifth year. However, I will need to find how much percent of the year is recovered. To do so, I will divide the remaining outlay, which is the 1000, by the 3500, and I will give the answer, which is 0.286. So if you noticed, I used the whole first year to cover my initial outlay. I also used the whole second year to cover my initial outlay. However, for the third year, I only used 0.286 of the year, which is 
28.6% of the year. So my answer will be the initial cost or initial outlay is recovered in two years, 0.29 or 27 months. Now, how did I find 27 months? It's because 0.286 of a year is actually three months, 0.4, or we can just say three months. Now, three months plus the two years, 12 and 12, will give me 27 months in total. Now, how do I turn a percentage in two months? Is by multiplying the 0.286 by 12. 12 because it's 12 months, and it will give me 3.4 months. Now let's look at an exercise. It says, consider the following four-year project. The initial after-tax outlay is $1 million. The after-tax cash inflow for, for year 1, 2, 3, and 4 are 400000 300000 200000 and 200000 respectively. What is the payback period without discounting the cash flows, knowing that the cutoff period is four years? Should you accept or reject this project? If you notice here, it, the question does not only ask you uh, what is the payback period or in how long you will recover your initial outlay. It also tells you should you accept or reject this project. I will show you step by step how to solve this kind of question. Let's get started as we did before. We have our initial outlay, which is the $1 million. So we will put it as a negative number. And then we will add to it our first cash inflow, the 400,000. And the answer will be minus 600,000, which means we are still short 600,000. And then we will start with the 600,000. And we will put it as minus because this is still outstanding or we still have not recovered it. And I will add to it the second cash inflow, which is the 300,000. And my answer will be minus 300,000. So we are still short 300,000. So we should go on. Again, minus 300,000 plus the third cash inflow, which is 200,000. And the answer will be minus 100,000, so we should continue. And then, minus 100,000 plus my fourth cash inflow, the 200,000. And here, we will obviously cover the amount because 200,000 already covers the 100,000. What we should do here is find in how long does it cover the amount. To do so, I will divide the 100,000 by the 200,000 and I will get 0.5 or actually 0 0.5. As you can notice, we used the whole first year, the whole second year and the whole third year to cover the amount but only 0 0.5 of the, of the fourth year. So my answer or the payback period is 3.5 years or 42 months. And now the question also asks whether to accept or reject the project. Now we have already solved for the payback period, which is 3.5 years. However, we have a given cutoff period, which is 4. A cutoff period is a period that the financial manager decides, like in 4 years, if I can cover the um, cost of this project, I will accept it. So we are using the payback period. If the payback period is less than the cutoff period, then we accept the project. However, if the payback period is greater than the cutoff period, then we will absolutely reject the project. In our case here, we will accept the project because the payback period, which is the 3.5, is less than the cutoff period, which is 4 years. Now we've reached the second part of this video which is about the discounted payback period decision model. It is a modified version of the payback period model wherein the time value of money is considered. It calculates how long would it take to recover the initial investment in current dollars. So it's basically exactly the same as the payback period except that it will take into consideration the time value of money. So let's look at an example. 
It says, suppose you are the owner of a coffee shop and consider buying an additional espresso machine. The machine costs $5,000 and you're expecting it to remain functional for five years, in which it will generate $2,500 each year. Considering a discount rate of 6%, when do you expect to recover your initial outlay? So if you notice, it's exactly the same as the payback period, except that you are given a discount rate, which is the 6%. Now, how do we solve this problem? We have a cost or an initial outlay of $5,000, and we have $2,500 for five years. Now, we need to discount it by 6%. The question is, can I use the present value of an annuity for this? Well, it makes a lot of sense to use the present value of an annuity equation. However, we cannot use it because if you use it, it will give you the lump sum in present time, but you cannot discount from it the remaining balance at each period of time. So we cannot do that. But what we can do is using the regular present value equation like so. So what we will do is we will treat each payment separately and we will take the present value of it. So let's get started. Again, we will start by using a table only for simplification. You don't really have to use a table. Let's start by putting the years. We have five years, but we will start with zero, which is today. And then let's put the cash flow. We have $2,500 for each year and a cash outlay of $5,000 or an expense of $5,000. We will start by finding the present value of the first payment, which would take place at year one. So we have 2,500, a discount rate of 6% to the power of one, because one year. Our present value of the 2,500 is 2,358.49. Now, if you're not very familiar with the present value, you can always go back and check my other videos on the present value. So this is the answer that we got. And now we will do the same as we did earlier, taking the initial outlay, the 5,000 in minus, and adding the first cash inflow to it. But I will not use the cash inflow, I will use the present value of it, which is the number I have just found, 2,358.49. And I will get the answer, which is minus 2,641.51, which is yet to be recovered. And then I will move on because I still have 2,641 to recover. So let's move to the second year. The second cash inflow is 2,600. I will find the present value of it, which will be 2,224.99. And I will do as I did before. I will take the outstanding balance or the remaining balance, 2,641.51. I will put it in minus and I will add to it the present value of the second cash inflow. And I will get the answer, which is minus 416. 0.52. Since the number is minus, it means I still have not recovered the initial outlay, so I will have to move on to the third year. I will take the present value of the 2500 and it will be 2099.05 and I will continue as usual. If you notice here, the 2,099.05 absolutely covers the 416. So what I need to do is to find when or the percentage of year it covers. So I will divide the 416.52 by the 2,099.05. The answer is 0.19 or 19%. Now, since I have covered the amount, I don't need to use the cash flow in the fourth year or the fifth year. And if you noticed, I used the whole first year to cover the amount, the whole second year, and 19% of the third year. So my answer is two years, 0.19, or 
26 months. Now let's look at another exercise. It says, suppose you're considering a four-year project with an initial outlay of 1 million and the following cash inflow for four years respectively, 500,000, 300,000, 300,000, and 300,000. If the discount rate is 10%, what is the payback period considering the time value of money? So let's get started. We have an initial outlay of $1 million, so I will make it in one line. And then the first cash inflow is 500000 I will I will try to find the present value of the 500000 by using the present value equation, raising it to the power of 1 because it's one year. And I will add to it the minus 1 million. And I will get the answer still at minus. So it's minus 545,454.55. So I will continue. And then again, I will add the present value of the second cash inflow, which is the 300,000, with the remaining balance or the outstanding balance. And then I will get the answer, which is minus 297,520.67. The number is still in minus, so I will need to go on. So again, I will add the third cash inflow, uh, sorry, the third present value of the cash inflow, and I will get the answer minus 72,126.23. Since the number is on minus, I will still continue. And now when I reach the fourth cash inflow, you will notice that I will already cover the amount. So I used the first whole year, the second whole year, and the third whole year, but only part of the fourth year. How much percent of it or how much is it? I will divide the outstanding balance, which is the 72,126.23, by uh, the present value of the fourth year, which is the 204,904.04. And I will get 0.35 or 35%. So the payback period is 3 years, 0.35 or 40 months. Now the final part of this video is about the advantages and disadvantages of both these models. As for the payback period, its main advantage is being the easiest model to apply. However, it has two disadvantages. First, time value of money is ignored. And second, cash flows after the cutoff date are ignored. With regard to the discounted payback period, its main advantage is being easy to apply, consistent with the time value of money. However, it has a key disadvantage, which is ignoring the cash flow after the cutoff date. That's it from me today. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below, and I would appreciate a thumbs up.